Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will share with you one tip. One tip that will make you a better programmer instantly. In instantly? Really? Seems like a lie. Oh, it's a clickbait. Oh, okay. So let's get started. So the one question that I have been asked quite a lot over Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even TikTok, actually nobody cares about TikTok. So the question that I've been asked is how do you go from beginner to an intermediate or an expert stage? So you have understood the basics of programming. So uh, you went through the if statements, the while loops, the for loops, the operators, uh, the functions, uh, the object oriented programming, whatever the basics are, you have covered them. Now what? What do I do next? So the answer is very simple and everybody pretty much knows it already and that is projects. So you start with creating projects that you get excited about. So uh, one example would be my uh, OpenCV tutorial in which I have half of the tutorial based on basics and the other half is just for projects. So I have created three projects that actually help you understand and implement the basics you have learned. And this is important because you have to dive in right away to the projects so you don't really um, get tired of the programming language and you don't really lose the will to actually go through with the programming language. So I have done the basics. I am doing the projects. What's next? How do I get better at programming? So the idea is that whenever you are creating projects, the projects are basically derivatives of other projects. So there is literally no project that is completely entirely new. So what you are doing is you are replicating projects, you are taking pieces of different projects and you're putting them together, right? So what do you have to do to get better at building these projects in two folds? One is how do you increase the speed at which you program? And second is how do you actually write better code, more efficient code? So the answer to both of these questions is modular functions. And this is the tip that I was referring to. So we all know that functions basically, they are snippet of code that perform a certain task. So let's say that task, um, let's, let's take an example of a fish game. So I have a game where I have to spawn a lot of fishes. So there's an aquarium and inside that aquarium, I have to bring up these fishes but of course I will put them in different places. That's called spawning, right? So what I will do is I will create a function that will create these fishes and it will randomly generate some positions for these fishes, right? So I can create this function very easily. All I have to do is I will input uh, the object, which is the fish object. And I will tell, for example, I need a hundred fishes. I need 50 fishes. I need 20 fishes. And that's it. That's very simple. So what I need to do now is if I have done this part, which is basically spawning objects, I should be take, I should be able to take this part and replicate that in another project. Uh, let's say I'm creating a city in which I have lots of cars, right? Now I want to generate uh, a random city uh, or random uh, locations of cars every time. So I can use that same fish function in my car project. And instead of the fish, I will give the object as the car. So I will say that, okay, now I want the car to be spawned in different locations within our city. So this way, not only you will be able to increase this time you uh, have to spend coding, but you will also increase to your efficiency. And I will tell you how that is. But before I tell you that, one thing to note is that when you're writing modular functions, you have to name your variables in a modular way. So for example, if you were creating that fish game, you don't say fish object, okay? You will just say uh, spawn object or uh, my object, something like this, so that even if you are using it in another project, it should not be something very specific. It should be something generic so that it is easy to read even in another project, right? So that is the basic concept. So 
this can tell you, this can give you the idea of how this will speed up your process of creating different projects. But how does it increase efficiency? How does it increase uh, or how does it make you a better coder over time, right? So the answer is very simple. Once you create, a, let's say, a function, later on you will learn new techniques. For example, you have learned for, uh, for loops, right? Now, when you are learning better techniques, you might come across list comprehensions. Now, list comprehensions are like for loops, but in one line. They are a little more easier to read. Now, what you can do is, once you have that function stored already, uh, again, you don't uh, store a function or whatever code you have, you don't store it on your hard disk. Stop living in 1980s, okay? Store your code, all of it online. Put it on the cloud. Where, doesn't matter where you put it, GitHub, GitLab, Git, wherever you put it, just put it somewhere online so that you can retrieve it easily. Okay, that being said, coming back, what we have to do is you have to take that code and for example, I have learned a new technique of list comprehension. So what I will do is now that I have understood that technique, I will change my previous function. I will enhance it, enhance it a little bit more this time with, I will change the for loop to list comprehension. This way I will keep up to date all of my codes online and I will have an archive all, of all my functions that I can use anytime I want, right? So this makes it very easy for you to actually use these functions. It doesn't matter which type of programming language you are using or which type of developer you are, whether you are using web development, whether you are creating an app uh, for delivery system, for dating system, maybe you are trying to fill that hole in your heart with that dating system, I, I don't know. Maybe you are doing that. Whatever you are doing, there is a way that you can do it better, right? And that better way is modular functions. So if you keep those snippets of code archived in your um, GitHub or GitLab or wherever you have stored them, then at any given instant, you can take those code and you can put it, you can take that function and that you can put it in your new project. And this will allow you to create projects very fast. And you might have seen my, my uh, projects, what I have done in the previous few months, and I have been using this technique, and I have been able to create a lot of projects uh, with a small amount of time. And a lot of you have been asking, how do you actually do that? And this is one of my secrets that I have this library, I'm not sharing it publicly, but I have this library and I have this uh, archive of functions where I just grab them and paste it and I write the code. And it helps me tremendously to create new projects very, very efficiently and fast. And this technique is not just applied in software, it's even applied in hardware. And a lot of big companies are using this technique. Let me give you an example. I have here a drill machine. Now this drill, is by, drill machine is by Black & Decker. Now, what they did was very smart. Now this drill machine basically has some drill bits that you can have, um, you can replace and you can add. And it also has a very modular part, which is the battery. Now what they did was they created a system uh, by the name 20 volts and they created another system by the name 40 volts. So they have these two modular batteries that you can take any of their tools, whether it's a drill machine or it's a saw, whatever it is, you can take that and you can just plug in the battery, whatever tools you have. So what they did was they designed it once and now they are using it again and again in different projects. And that is what modularity is all about. So whenever you are creating a new project, think of modularity. Think of how I can make a code Okay, how I can make a function that could be used elsewhere as well, right? So this is a brilliant idea because not only the consumer is benefiting, but the manufacturer is benefiting as well because they don't have to produce many different designs and many different ideas. They can just produce these lithium batteries, uh, one, one single type and they are good to go. And even for the consumer, it's very easy to go and use this as uh, this will be the same type and the charger will be same as well. So I don't have to go and buy a bunch of batteries and a bunch of chargers just to uh, use the use some tools when I'm working, right? 
So that is the idea behind modularity. And this is a very good and strong idea that you have to understand when you are writing a new project. So to conclude, first of all, don't make that dating app. It's, it's not worth it. Just stop, OK? Don't try to fill that void. Second, you have to make modular functions. No matter what you do, just think ahead. Don't just think of right now. Think of what you will be doing with this later on as well. Because every piece of code could be applied in a different project as well. OK, so that is the second step. Third step, archive your projects, archive your functions, put them online. Don't put it on a hard disk. For the love of God, don't put it on a hard disk. This is not 1980s or 1970s. Everything is on cloud. So put your code up upstairs please so this is it for today's video i hope you have learned something new make sure you create these functions and maybe put it on the comments share your links maybe i will create a very big archive where all of you have given your different functions and i will put them all in one place so other people can benefit as well think of the community just don't think of a single project right so that is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of these tips, again, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, it's okay. Give it a dislike, it doesn't matter. It's your choice. And uh, do subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.